In this tutorial, we will learn how to create a realistic scene of raindrops on water, like this one, in Blender. Since it is based on dynamic paint, it will help if you first watch our previous tutorial on dynamic paint, to know how to create ripples on water. The link is given below in the video description, we'll apply that same technique here. So let us now start with a blank new scene. We will use this default cube as an emitter object. So the rain droplets will originate from here and scatter all around. Let us first change its thickness to make it a thin plate, maybe by 0.1. Now, in order to create raindrops from this cube, we have to create a particle system for this object or the emitter. So go to this particles tab. Then click on this plus button to add a new particle system in this list. If you now run the animation, you'll see that these particles are getting generated from the cube and falling down due to gravity. But your scene length may be different, let's say 1000. In that case, you have to also change this end frame number to the same 1000. Now, the particles will be generated without a break until the end of the animation. In the next step, we have to create the water surface, so we'll add a plane over here for the water. Let us move this object upward so that it stays at a distance above the water, like this. Maybe we can use a value of 2 units. And then we have to add a plane here, which will form our water surface. So go to the Add menu and add a simple plane. Let us enlarge it in size, maybe by a factor of 4. And in order to match the size of both the objects, we have to enlarge this as well. But we can keep it slightly smaller, so let's enter 3.5 for this. Later, we'll completely hide this emitter, it won't be visible in the final output, only the water surface will remain visible. Now select this plane and go to the Modifiers tab. Then add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Switch over to the Simple option. Then increase these levels to 5 or 6. The higher is the better. Now let us go to the Physics tab and click on Dynamic Paint. So Blender will add this Physics part, and this type field should be Canvas. Then click on this Add Canvas to create a new canvas like this. We have already discussed these settings in our previous tutorial which is linked below, so we won't repeat them here. We have to just change this surface type to Waves. Now, go to the Object menu and select the Shade Smooth option, which is very important in order to get smooth ripples. Next, we'll enable this object as the Brush object. So go to the Physics tab and click on Dynamic Paint. We have to change this Type field to Brush, and then click on Add Brush button to create a new brush over here. So with these settings, this whole object will become a brush, but that is not really what we need. We need each of these particles to be an individual brush object, so that they create enough ripples when they hit this water surface. So we have to change this paint field. Instead of Mesh Volume, let us select Particle System. And then in this Particle System field, we have to select the same particle system, which we created earlier in this tab. So this same particle system that we have created for the emitter object should go in the physics tab under dynamic paint physics in this section for the particle system. I hope it's clear. Now, if you run the simulation again, you'll see that the particles are hitting the water surface and the ripples are getting created. But there are too many ripples because the number of particles is too high. We can actually control this. We can change the number of particles, whatever is suitable in this particles tab. We have to modify this number, but please remember that this number depends on the surface area or the size of your object. If the area to cover is bigger in your case, you should use a higher number of particles. For this particular case, let us go with a smaller number, maybe 200. You can again test it and verify whether the number of ripples is matching with your requirement or not, and you can also change the speed of these particles so that they hit the surface with a greater force and deep impact. Once everything is final, we should hide this emitter object completely, so that nothing else is visible in the render output. We only get to see the water surface and the ripples, creating an illusion of raindrops on the water. Now, the last thing is to create some suitable materials for this scene. So select our only object, this water surface, and turn on the rendered view mode. We can also enable the HDRI lighting with a higher strength, maybe 1.5. Then go to the Materials tab and create a new material. Let us change this base color to some light shade of blue. After that, 
change this roughness value somewhere around 0.1. And for the transparency, change this transmission value to 1. You can also change this IOR to 1.1 or 1.2. That completes our material setup, so you can now run the simulation for the final time and verify how it looks. I think this is quite good and realistic. You can of course spend more time to fine-tune the effect, but this is how you can create raindrops on water. Also, please pay good attention to your lighting, that can make or break a scene. And if you want you can also increase the number of particles for this cube, in order to increase the density of the raindrops. So let us increase this number here, maybe to 400. Now we will get higher number of particles and higher number of ripples on the water, like it is raining heavily. We did not display the actual raindrops themselves, because you cannot really see the drops when it rains heavily, but you can assign a mesh object for the particles and display them, if you wish to show the particles actually dropping on the water. So, that was the presentation for today. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.